If you're thinking about making the move to Tulsa, Oklahoma in 2024, and you are wondering if the Tulsa market is going to crash, if it's a good time to buy a house, well then in this video, I am going to go over 2023 market data, how we ended up doing, how the Tulsa metro area did as a whole. We're going to do predictions for 2024. I definitely don't have a crystal ball, so my predictions are going to be informative based on education, not skewing headlines or misusing data points. And so you really will get a look at what the market's going to be like for 2024, what is expected here in the Tulsa area and across the nation, you know, what the housing forecast is as well. So intertwine them together. First up, before I start with a little bit nationally, like I said, I'm going to go back and forth. We had all kinds of crazy headlines saying, you know, the market was going to crash in 2023 for a while. There were even, you know, experts predicting like 20 to 25% drops in real estate. And it never made sense to people like boots on the ground because we knew supply and demand. We knew that it wasn't like the last time when people were just like moving and buying to flip where they were getting like stated income loans. So we knew that this was not the same scenario as it was in 2008, 2009. The people that were buying houses at those low interest rates were very qualified. And if you bought, you know, during that time period, you, one of the ones that have the most affordable housing situation in years and years and years, I mean, we were at historic affordability. So when we heard that the market was going to crash, the economist, and when I was going through my doctorate, we looked at data and it was based on, in education, you know, it was based on economists' thoughts and it always drove me crazy. They're doing surveys, they're looking at things, they're not thinking about it. Like they're only thinking about it scientifically. They're not thinking about it qualitatively at all. Like we knew who's gonna give up their 2% mortgages, their easy low housing payment. Like we're not gonna have a default. We're not gonna have tons of sellers like go into the market because interest rates are high. It just never made sense with supply and demand and with affordability, like a housing crash just never made sense. And I know there are some areas, they did see you know a drastic shift, but if we were to put a map up of the United States in green were houses that, you know, are still appreciating and red dots were markets where you were seeing, you know, still depreciation. We would have like a green map with a few spots of red. I mean, for the most part, you know, as a country as a whole, you were seeing, uh, I believe it's 5.5 appreciation as a country as a whole. You have to take the headlines with a grain of salt. You can't let people skewing data keep you from making a good choice. And yes, for a lot of people, staying in their house is the right decision. But for a lot of people, it's not. And right now it is cheaper to rent than it is to buy. But, you know, long-term experts are projecting, and I'll pull this up in a second, are projecting housing appreciation for, you know, the next five years. That's as far as they're forecasting right now. So you just say on a $400,000 house, basically there's like 72,000 in appreciation in five years. So yes, you might be saving money on the payment, but that payment is not set. Landlords can still up the rent and you are not getting those tax incentives. You are not uh, building equity. So, you know, there's a huge difference in a renter's net worth and a homeowner's net worth. And that is really because of the forced savings account of home ownership. So, okay, off my soapbox, let's look at data. How did Tulsa, Oklahoma fare? in 2023. Tulsa itself had 1.7% appreciation. Again, no depreciation. And when I was telling you guys, you know, I said, I think that we're gonna have slight appreciation, slight depreciation, or, you know, just net neutral. I didn't ever think that we were going to see, you know, drastic shifts in the market as far as price appreciation. The market definitely, definitely changed, don't get me wrong. Bixby, Oklahoma, we had a 6.1% year over year appreciation. Jank 6.7% year over year and Broken Arrow 7.7% year over year. I want you to take a look too at these price differences. Our highest price suburb is Bixby uh, with the average house at $421,527. Jinx right behind it at $420,000. Broken Arrow substantially different, $324,334. 
dollars and then Tulsa substantially lower at 284,419. So when you see Tulsa's housing is lower nationally, the Tulsa housing market itself is. When you go in the surrounding suburbs, those are a little bit higher. But what you can get for your money, the school systems that you're in, the amenities that you have, the lifestyle uh, in the suburbs. So even though, you know, they're more expensive, really for what you can get, it's fantastic. Let's pause right here in the Tulsa market and talk about mortgage rates because this video is about, you know, thinking of buying in 2024. As we're doing this, you're going to learn about 2023, but what to expect in 2024. Heading into the new year, mortgage rates remained on a downward trend. From September of 2023 until now, we have been on a downward trend, ticking up a little bit. But so we've been from 7.12, to up as high as 7.79 to 6.61. Well, the Fed's indicated that they are cutting rates. And so the market has reacted to that and they have signaled that they plan to cut rates 0.25 points three times, you know, during the next year. Okay, and so what I'm gonna quote you is research and experts. So even though mortgage rates are falling, I don't want you thinking, oh, let's hold out. We're gonna get to where we were at the high, uh, the pandemic levels, the 2%. Like, I don't see that happening. I don't know that that will ever, ever happen again. But if you are waiting to buy to get like low rates, you're gonna be waiting forever and then you're gonna lose so much money in rent unless you're happy, you know, staying in your house. But yes, I think we're going to see rates fall. Again, I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not gonna try to predict mortgage rates. They're hovering around, you know, the six and a half percent. One of my lenders sent me a message a couple days ago saying that, you know, rates were lower now than they have been in the past year. They were low, it was like, it's something that we're seeing. And the housing market has, you know, reacted to that here in the Tulsa area. We are seeing, you know, a pickup of, you know, buyers reaching out and um, people wanting to start looking again. Dean Baker is a senior economist at the Center for Economic Research. And so he's saying that although we may see rates go under 6%, which is, you know, low by, you know, when they were up to about 8%, they are falling, but certainly not to the pandemic lows. Okay, so this I've talked about before, but you know, one of the reasons that the housing market has been so uh, buoyant is because 78.7% of, you know, mortgages have rates less than 5%. Okay, so if you have a rate less than 5%, unless you are in a situation where you have to make a move, whether that's because your family's grown, you've gotten married, divorce, that happens, definite life events that cause you to move, you're thinking really hard about keeping your house. And so that's what happened. People were not willing to sell and buy at a higher rate for the most part. I mean, we had 11 and a half percent of people that had mortgages, you know, were less than 6%. So, you know, with that rate, you've got to think that's why our supply has not gone up. People don't want to sell and lose that rate. So it's kind of what we've called like a lockout limit. The experts that are saying, okay, if you're under 3%, you're not selling, like I said, unless you absolutely need to. Three to 4%, you're probably not selling. And these are for people that, you know, have to take out a mortgage, obviously. If you're a cash buyer, you know, we're seeing a lot of cash buyers out there and really right now, and still they're getting incentives. They're getting prices off the property, depending. The house is a great house and it's priced right. And it's, you know, just been on the market a couple of days. You're not gonna come in with cash and, you know, get a lot off. The homes that have been sitting, the homes that aren't priced right, aren't moving ready. You can't expect to get some discounts four to five percent interest rate you're really going to think before selling you might it might not matter that much um, but you're going to think about it if you're at five percent the interest rates probably aren't going to matter to you that much six percent and lower probably not going to matter lance lambert the founder of resi club he was saying you know that lock-in effect so what i was just explaining probably at its peak so as we see mortgage rates decrease and ease up a bit, we think we're going to see, you know, more sellers on the market. Okay, and then we have Erica Plemons. She's a housing analyst at Bright MLS. She doesn't represent the whole country, but what they're seeing there is that homeowners who are selling now aren't influenced by the rates. If you are not new construction and you're selling, it's really because you have to or the rates don't really matter to you. You're not influenced by them. The data from that MLS was roughly half the buyers. So this is November data. So half their buyers in November, it's just like telling a story, like sending a picture, you know, 50% of those buyers in November, were going to buy regardless 
and 23.9% you know, were buying with cash, so the mortgage rate didn't matter. But the top three reasons why people you know, decided not to buy, put their buying decisions on hold, you know, were mortgage rates, 72.1% and now we're back to national. So people pause their decision. Of course, you know, this is clear to us. Mortgage rate, 72.1% said it was because of a mortgage rate. Inventory, 34.4%. I mean, there hasn't been a lot of inventory. Uh, it's starting to pick up. It's still low when you look at historic levels. And then affordability. These two things, mortgage rates and inventory, can change and that is going to change, you know, the housing market. So I think in 2024, I don't think that it's going to be a feeding frenzy by any means, but I do think it's going to pick up. It's going to be more competitive because, you know, we've got an election year next year. That shouldn't, but it does influence things. There's definitely going to be pressure to put the lower rates. Again, not super low like we're seeing. I would be happy if we got in the fives with a grain of salt. Do I wish that my sons could get 2% interest rates? Of course. Do I wish I could go buy a house, another house with a 2% interest rate? Of course, but compared to what they are and realistically, you know, and for the economy, a 5% interest rate right now would be great and it would affect the housing market. And what we're going to see is like, it would have a release of inventory. So as rates ease, more sellers are going to put their houses on the market. We'll have the easing of rates. We'll have more inventory and uh, new construction has still been moving along, which has been great. Two of those big reasons for people putting on pause, you know, are now back in the market. So that's why I will say too, like Q1, we've already passed Q4 of 2023, but Q1 of 2024, I still think that there is an opportunity to get ahead of the game. Pros and cons, you're pro, you're going to have less competition still because, you know, interest rates are lower, but they're probably not as low as they're going to go. There's less inventory, but oh my goodness, talk about new construction inventory in the Tulsa area, Broken Arrow, Bixby, Jinx, Owasso. We have some fantastic new construction inventory and some builders are offering incentives, some builders aren't. The new construction deals, there are some deals being made and what's great about new construction, let me just put a plug in real quick and I'll tell you a story. We have some amazing, fantastic suburbs. You know, you're looking for 400,000, 500,000, uh, you get a new construction house, your insurance is going to be lower and your utilities are going to be lower. That in itself, you know, offsets some of the payment and not every builder. A lot of builders are buying down the interest rate and, you know, there are some builders I just wouldn't recommend you. And there are some builders that I absolutely adore and love and the quality of product and the way that they treat their clients, the people buying their house is, is absolutely fantastic. So I would definitely, you know, recommend new construction as an option for affordability. And if you look at the price tag, yes, new construction is, you know, more expensive price per square foot. But when you actually look at, you know, the utilities and the insurance and what you get, it definitely evens out more than you think. Okay, so, you know, here's the data, Goldman Sachs. There are three consecutive 25 basis point cuts in March. You know, basically that's like a quarter percent for March, May, and June to reset the policy rate from a level that Powell has recently taken to describing as well into restrictive territory rather than just restrictive. And so, you know, you've got to remember with Powell, they're trying to get that inflation rate to 2% and they are, you know, they are getting really, really close and making headway. So we are seeing that easing now. For 50 years, I'm not an economist, okay? I'm not a lender. From the experts that I listen to and from the data, this is what I'm explaining to you. So the 30 year mortgage rate for the past 50 years has moved in unison with a 10 year treasury rate. Okay, so you can see this, like this is a 30 year mortgage rate, here's a 10 year treasury rate. And over 50 years, the average spread has been 1.72. Right now the current spread is 2.78. So higher than that average 1.72 rate. So, you know, you had experts saying, the rates have got to come down, the rates have got to come down because they were looking at this average spread. So it made sense for the rates to come down but the Fed, because of inflation, was keeping those high and the markets were, were reacting. And so they weren't comfortable, you know, bringing mortgage rates down to the normal spread. So will it go back to 172? You know, probably 1.72, probably not. Could we see two? I think so. 
you know, so that brings it down to the fives, you know, and that's a good number where we really do see a lot more buyers enter the market. I mean, like I said, we are seeing more buyers enter the market now that we're in the sixes. I don't want to say open the floodgates, but we have so much pent up buyer demand. Getting in the fives will be probable, right? Based on March, May, and June, we may see that if this starts easing to two, you know, maybe we'll see that in May or June where we're in the fives. Again, with that becomes more competition. So if you know that you're going to buy a house, waiving certain fees to where when you do decide to refinance, if rates go, do go low, it's really not that expensive. New construction has definitely helped our housing market because it has given people the opportunity to buy something. 31% of total homes available for sale were new construction. That was according to the National Association of Home Builders. Compared to, look at this, the historic average has been 12%. Having that new construction inventory, you know, has really helped buyers find something. And again, if you're just looking at the price tag of new construction and you're thinking about buying in Tulsa, you know, reach out to me. We can talk about, you know, builders with incentives. We can talk about insurance. We can talk about, you know, utility savings, but there are definitely things to consider, like when you're thinking about that bottom line. This is where I was talking about seasonality, the average monthly price movement. Okay, so you can see as a whole, you've got higher price appreciation in March, April, May, June, July, the months where it's busier, where people are buying, where people are buying more. You have lower appreciation, January, February, August, September, October, November, December. That's not depreciation, that is just following the market. And this is 49 year average in December 0.1 compared to May is 0.88. That doesn't mean prices are depreciating. Okay, now we look at 2023 against the 49 year average, looking at that monthly, the seasonality, the appreciation there month over month. So we did in January, and this is nationally, the national average, we saw a 0.5% decline compared to the 40, to the average where it's normally 0.10. So very minimal, okay? February, again, minimal. This is 2023, so, you know, back a year ago. And then we going for the rest of the year, and the market is still outperforming the national average. Okay, we heard just over and over that 2023, you know, home prices are going to depreciate. This is showing us like, that's not what happened. We still outperformed the market. Okay, in 2024 home price forecast, so this is where we're thinking for 2024. You have eight industry experts that are predicting appreciation and depreciation. So the average of the predictions right now is one and a half percent. And you have Realtor.com saying they're going to depreciate 1.7%. And you have the MBA saying they're going to appreciate 4.1%. So that combined average is one and a half. And at our lowest projection with these experts, you know, we've got Goldman Sachs, NAR, Zillow, 1.7% depreciation. Again, that is slight. That's not a crash. So even if these um, housing forecasts, not worst case scenario, but for in this graph, the worst case scenario in this graph, 1.7%, if you're buying a house because you're buying it for your family and you're making a move, like that depreciation shouldn't stop you. Now, this is the Home Price Expectation Survey. And it's a survey that's produced in partnership with Fannie Mae, and it pulls over 100 housing experts, um, you know, across the industry. Um, so you do have the academics, the economists, all those mixed in, and it's for cast national home price percentage changes in the next five years. You know, so what they're predicting for the next five years. Those numbers are different than what we just saw. They're saying 5.92% appreciation. So obviously we still have people a little bit all over the place, but it's not drastic. This is from Economist. Okay, the Home Price Expectation Survey. 5.92% is what they estimated the appreciation, which really they must have already had the data. But if we look back here, I gave you the appreciation. Bixby was in line with that. Jenks and Broken Arrow beat the market a little. And, you know, Tulsa underperformed. Again, still not negative depreciation, but lower than that 5.92%. And let me just put Owasso in here, 9.7%, okay? The slight appreciation more normalized 2024 through 2028. So predicting appreciation according to that home price survey. So this is that example. I think I was giving it to you earlier. Um, I was just talking to somebody about it. Your potential growth in wealth. Is it less expensive to rent right now than it is to buy and carry a mortgage in a lot of situations? Yes, it definitely is. What happens is with renters and with homeowners, there is a vast difference of you know the wealth 
at the end of age that they accumulate because homeowners have that forced appreciation and they have that forced savings account. So, you know, they are building wealth. Like, yes, they're making those payments, but they're building wealth as they go. So yes, leasing is less expensive, but you're also losing out the appreciation. You're also losing out on any tax benefits. So, you, you know, you definitely need to keep that in mind. Based on this analysis, if you would buy a $400,000 house in 2024, in 2029, you have a 72,405 home equity increase. If you're renting, your costs are not fixed. You don't know what that rent is going to, you know, move up to, and then you have no savings or tax benefits. Okay, so this is how, with Freddie Mac, how home prices appreciated throughout the year. January here through November. Not the crazy appreciation we were seeing, that's Freddie Mac. Uh, here's Case Schiller, here's FHA. Since the beginning of the year, the CoreLogic S&P, the Case Schiller Index has increased by about 7% since the beginning of the year and is 1% higher than at its peak in 2022. So recovering all those losses that you know were lost in the second half of 2022. So again, as a whole, we're 1% higher than the height. Now let's look at percent of annual home appreciation. And I just like showing you the data historically. So we're looking at a large timeline and we're not looking at like month by month and volatility. So from 1980 to 2022, this is seasonally adjusted. Average home price appreciation was 4.92%. This dotted line marks the average. So you can see, you know, there were definitely years where that average wasn't there at all. Here we are when we had the housing crash and we saw that depreciation. We saw what everybody remembers. And then, you know, for the past 10 years, you know, we've had the average appreciation and then these unicorn years, which is like off the chart appreciation. I don't think anybody wants to see that again. Yes, it's nice for the equity, but we, you know, we still want housing to be affordable. We don't want it getting less and less affordable, but it will because prices should keep appreciating. So the chief economist at Poor Logic, Selma Hat. She says, with mortgage rates dropping, demand for homes in early 2024 is likely to be strong and it's going to put pressure on prices. Uh, similar to trends observed in early 2023, most markets will continue to reach new home price highs over the course of 2024. They're just saying like we've already recovered from any losses, from any, any like decelerization, any depreciation from month to month. Like we're at the highs again. So it's predicted to continue being that way. So the longer you wait, the higher you're going to pay. It shouldn't be crazy. We're hoping it doesn't get crazy, but you are going to have increased competition. So getting ready to dive back into our local Tulsa data. All that to say that the headlines, you know, paint, have painted a very different picture. Funny though, I don't watch TV very much, but you know, the news, my husband had the news on this weekend and it was talking about how the housing market was coming back and headlines, they do, you know, more to terrify than clarify. But now, you know, they're pumping up the market and saying, you know, that we're seeing an increase and all that based on what I showed you. If you are looking to buy because you want a house, you want to start building equity, well, I'm going to tell you, like, it's going to be, it seems to be a good time to buy now. I'm going to keep telling you that in the future because it looks like we're going to continue to see home price appreciation. If you are waiting on the sidelines because you think the market's going to crash and you're trying to time the market, I would disagree with you and tell you some people are lucky enough to time the market. I have a handful of buyers that that 2020, they thought the housing market was getting ready to crash. And so instead of buying at the most affordable time, ever and taking in fantastic equity over the years. They listened to people. They weren't making educated choices based on data. Choices were made out of fear. So if your situation is, you know, you can't buy a house, there's nothing that we can do about that. But if you're just simply holding off and waiting, I, I just think that's a mistake. And I think the, you know, I think the longer you wait, the worse shape you're going to be in. So let's get back to our data. Let's look at Tulsa County. And what I'm going to do is we are going to look at 2023. Uh, this is December, okay, um, the end of 2023, just to show you kind of where the market ended compared to December of last year, which I'm going to go over quickly because it's only one month, but just to give you a December recap. And this is Tulsa County. We're not on the other graph. I have the cities pulled up. This is just Tulsa County inventory. Closed listings down 13%. 
Pending listings were up 16%. So in December, you know, those rates easing, we did have more houses go under contract uh, than we did December of 2022. In new listings, we saw a 4% increase. That easing does make sense. That easing of the mortgage rates is you now causing more houses to come on the market and it's causing, you know, more people to go under contract. Average list price uh, up 1.58%, you know, from December of last year. December 2022, and let's not even look at list price, let's look at sales price. The average sales price was 296,856. This year, the average sales price was 301,208 in December. Average percent of selling price, you know, still the same. You know, but last December we had, the market was in the slowdown already. We had definitely seen that. Not too big of a shift, 98.9%. So again, homes, you know, really still almost sales price, but again, an average. Um, you got to think, you know, there's the outliers, there's data that skews, there's numbers that skew the data. That's why it's always important to really drill down on your neighborhood, uh, drill down on the town, the school district, those kind of things. Days on market have increased by 16%. This year, 32 was the average. Last year, in December was 27. End of month inventory has increased by almost 10%. So last year, the end of month inventory was 1,409. This year, it was 1,543. And let me explain this. End of month inventory increase um, by 10%. How is, did the month supply of inventory increase so much? And that is because of the interest rates. We did have buyers pull out of the market. We had less buyers. So this is based on the amount of buyers and homes pulling under contract uh, based on the amount of inventory. So it's a calculation. So it raised to 2.26 months inventory. Historically, that is still a seller's market, but we have seen it be more of a buyer's market with the current mortgage rates. I like to look at 2019 because that was our last normal year. Because 2019, you know, the headlines were like, the real estate market's doing great. Like, it was good. It was healthy. It was considered, you know, we were in a seller's market. It wasn't crazy, but it was a normal year. Back in December of 2019, 769 closed sales, 593 pending sales. We compare that to December now, and we have 578, both closed and pending. Definitely a shift in closed sales and similar in pending sales. New listings, 765 in December of 2019, now 643. So, you know, lower, not drastically. Gosh, guys, look at the average list price. December this year, 307. In 2019, 224,000, that appreciation. Okay, and then average percent of selling price to list price 97.8. So it's actually higher in 2023 at 98.1. And now let's look at the end of the month inventory, 1,543. In December of 2019, it was 2,079. A quarter down from you know a normal year. And then um, supply of inventory, 2.41. So it was you know definitely a seller's market there. That little bit of data differential. Back to our cities, Bixby, Oklahoma, Jinx, Oklahoma, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. You know, we've got the percent appreciation for the months. And then let's look at days on market. I don't like to look at monthly for the appreciation because that changes so much. Although, you know, we'll take a look at it for days on market. We do want to look at it. So in December, days on market has gone up and this is an average. So Bixby, the highest, uh, 73 days on market. Bixby has a ton of new construction and new construction homes. This is pulled, you know, from the MLS from closing. So, you know, a lot of builders will put their inventory on the market when they're breaking dirt. So people, you know, can buy it and have their own choices that increases the days on market. So that's an average Jinx 40, Broken Arrow 43. In this case, you know, I like to look at the median too, because that's our middle number. And from all the houses in December, from zero days on market to 900 days on market, whatever it is, the middle number, so where most of them are, you had 19 days in Tulsa, 30 days in Bixby, 18 days in Jinx, and 20 days in Broken Arrow. You definitely feel that. You definitely have more time. We still want to hurry and get in a house. And we are hearing stories. You know, I'm uh, hearing stories from my agents uh, in the East and West Coast where things, you know, happen a little bit sooner than they happen here in Oklahoma. And they are starting to see way more competition, way more multiple offers, packed open houses. We are starting to see picked up buyer demand, uh, more showings. In some price ranges, we are getting multiple offers. When a house is priced good, going under contract, you know, very, very quickly. We're not seeing it to the effects of the East Coast and the West Coast in those hot markets, but we are seeing an increase, like I said, of buyer activity. But now when you start looking, you know, month over month, uh, the story changes. And so you see Tulsa has like a 17% increase from 
last December. From last December, Bixby has an 8% decrease, Jinx has a 13% decrease, and Broken Arrow has a 5% increase. You go to three months, Owasso down 3% from last December. Okay, then we go to a rolling three months, Owasso down 2.7, Jinx down 7.5, Bixby down 2.7, and Tulsa up 7. Let's put Broken Arrow back in here. And you have Broken Arrow 10% increase from rolling three months from the previous. We go back six months, Broken Arrow uh, six and a half. And this is, you know, totaling the past six months. Jinx down 1.7, Bixby up 2.1, Tulsa up 1.5. In the past month, you know, Tulsa numbers, you know, really outperformed. Um, whereas, you know, Bixby, Jinx, Owasso numbers were underperforming their averages. And that's why you have to go back and look the rolling 12 months, but it does tell me, and we see this in practice, that we are being able to get deals. Like I said, new construction was accounting for uh, 31% nationally the houses sold. And so that new construction though, we are seeing incentives. Okay, well, when we take a monthly look, you know, the picture changes for us and we can see this in the real estate market. You know, these are December numbers. I know in some areas, in some price points that I can, you know, go in and I'm expecting to get, you know, a decent amount off the price. And um, December, you've got in the month inventory and you have, um, you know, builders getting some properties off the books, you know, taking the loss. We definitely saw builders doing that. And I would say, you know, a lot of this is new construction, but also I think a lot of this is people, you know, pricing their houses according to the old market instead of, you know, the new market. So pricing right. So we know that if we look at the rolling 12 months, we have appreciation in all categories, but we really have to look when sellers are pricing their homes, that they're looking at the big picture. They're looking at the sold inventory and they're pricing right. As of now, you know, buying in December, it is a great time to buy. Not that the market is crashing at all, but there are incentives to be had. You know, there's seller concessions, there's discounts on prices. So there's so much to take into account. Is 2024 a good year to buy? I think that if you are buying in Q1, that you have a good chance of getting, you know, a pretty good deal. I think you do. Are builders giving pretty great incentives right now? Uh, yes, many of them are. My forecast for the Tulsa market, I will continue to look at data. I'll continue to research and educate myself. I believe that we're going to be in line with last year. Now, I think that we will have more people put their houses on the market, not enough to saturate, but enough to have a healthy balance to where we're not going to see that crazy appreciation. But I do think, you know, going forward, we're going to see net appreciation. So I think going forward, we're definitely going to see uh, net appreciation. If you want me to run numbers for you, you know, if you're thinking about moving out here, looking at houses, and you want me to run numbers, I mean, we can drill down and we can really see uh, the areas because that definitely matters. And not all my market updates are going to be this long at all, but we'll definitely have the quarterly ones that are longer. And then, you know, my monthly ones I can go through pretty quickly. I hope this video is helpful. If you are thinking about making that move to Tulsa, Oklahoma, or any of our surrounding suburbs, reach out to me. You'll talk to me. You'll talk to somebody on my team. It doesn't matter, you know, if you're getting ready to come into town in three days, or if you're 90 days or a year out, we would love to talk to you and show you around town.